Well, hello, retro game players. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Marcus, and today's top 10 list is the top 10 retro styled PS4 games that have a physical release. Kick back, get yourself some Kool Aid, get out your 8 bit calculators, and get ready to crunch some numbers. Okay, so coming in at number 10 is a game that's a follow-up to a classic series. And this series is so iconic, it's one of my favorites, and I have to say I just wish that they would have polished this game a little bit more. But here it is, Double Dragon 4, and I'll tell you what, the, the positives of this game are the graphics. They really nailed the 8-bit style. It's like you're playing on an old NES. And the Double Dragon 1 and 2 running on an NES, that's sort of what this looks like. They added a lot of characters, there's lots of levels, there's lots of unlockable characters. The game itself is actually pretty long and the levels are pretty diverse. I feel like that is what they nailed. The soundtrack, the actual score I should say, is pretty good. And then the chiptune soundtrack is what I usually turn it to and I really dig that. So I feel like the game itself has a lot going for it but there's a lot of like graphical issues, like screen tearing, there's no multiplayer online option, which kind of sucks. So, it, you know, it's got some things that drag it down. It's also just a little repetitive, you know, you know but what can I say, like Double Dragon 1 and 2, it fits in with that crowd, you know, that, that style of game. So it's not horrible by any means, and coming in at number 10 on this list is, is just fine, so. There you go, Double Dragon 4, let's move up to number 9. Number nine, nine. Alright, the number 9 game is a game that really recalls the early 80s, and for me, I would say it's a perfect example of like a new game where they went really far back. I'm talking Apple II style graphics and gameplay, and of course, if you haven't heard of Oregon Trail, well, this is the Oregon Trail, however, more like bodily organs, and it's actually really cool. The graphics are super stylized in the old, old school, almost like CGA graphics. Um, the music is actually really good, um, very chiptune style, and basically the gameplay is that instead of you trying to get to the West Coast and get to Oregon on the Oregon Trail, you're actually going um, through the United States through a zombie infected apocalypse basically uh, with radioactive uh, you know areas and things you have to avoid you have to pick out a vehicle and you pick out a team and basically you know there's there's hunting there's like different you know camping scenarios people can get you know bit by zombies they can die from all kinds of things and it's actually really fun I have to tell you that when I was a kid I would go to my computer lab and I mean I loved the Apple too and the way that it would just glow in its old school graphics and we would play all these crazy computer games. The Oregon Trail was one of my favorites and it was just so fun and it's it's so cool to see that somebody actually you know not only made a cool pun on the name but actually put some effort into the game itself and so yeah this game's really fun. Highly recommend this one. Number nine, Oregon Trail. Let's go up to number eight. So the number eight game on this list really pays homage to a lot of the classic point and click adventure style games. Uh, specifically, the one that really rings true for me with this is Snatcher. Now I'll tell you, I think Snatcher is uh, a much better game, okay, so I'm going to just say that right off the bat, but that's the closest comparison I can pull for this one. And this is Read Only Memories 2064, and it's actually really cool. The soundtrack's really solid. 
Uh, the gameplay starts off a little slow, but that's because it's building up a good story. And the story is surprisingly good. Um, I have not beat this, but I've played it for a few hours, and I gotta tell you guys, it's actually really fun. Um, if you like the old school kind of interacting on a static screen. So again, like Snatcher is perfect, but it's it's got a great sort of, you know, new, uh, I think it takes place in San Francisco, like in the future, and it's just got this cool futuristic vibe. Everything is screaming like, you know, 80s style, but in the future, and it's, it's actually really well done. Um, also, one thing I'll tell you too is normally games with voice acting, kind of freak me out a little bit like especially with retro style games i don't like it when characters talk um and this game has a lot of dialogue but what was weird is i actually thought the dialogue and the voice acting was really good so they actually got quite a few actors and i was impressed with that so um if you're looking to just kind of chill out on the couch and like play some cool old school adventure this one is really good it also reminds me a little bit of the game deja vu i'm not sure if you guys remember that i know it was ported to nes but i actually played it back on the uh old mac plus and it's a classic you know detective style point and click sort of adventure game and anyway it just really reminded me of that um another one that it would be similar to is like rise of the dragon actually that's another similar one i think that's on uh, sega cd so anyway classic uh style game read only memories 2064 check that one out let's move up to number seven number seven so by far, this game coming in at number seven is the most hardcore one on this list. It is extremely bloody, extremely gothic, and it has a very old school style, but it's more like, I'd say, like 32-bit, almost Symphony of the Night. That's kind of what it looks like to me, and it's Slain. Now, Slain is a really cool side-scrolling action game. Uh, you know, you got a sword, you're basically battling demons, the graphics are phenomenal. The environments are phenomenal. The soundtrack is super heavy metal, like really cool. I was impressed with that. It's by the guitar player from Celtic Frost, uh, but it's jamming. It's very, very cool. And the graphics, like I said, the pixel art style is top notch. Uh, fortunately, there's checkpoints laid out in the levels because I found myself actually running to those. Uh, there are some platforming elements too, but once you get to the checkpoint, that's where you can kind of like take a breath, you know. Um, I found myself running past a lot of the crazy, you know, monsters that are very difficult. You can block, you do have a projectile attack, and you can charge up your weapon, uh, but everything is kind of strategic. It's almost a strategic style combat system, but it's really fun. And if you guys are looking for something that's going to challenge you, definitely check this one out. I was highly impressed with it. I, I had no clue that the graphics were that good the first time I played it. I mean, I, I knew the game would be fun because I saw some screenshots. I'm like, well, that looks pretty sweet. But once you see it in motion, it's just beautiful. This game is beautiful. So that's number seven. Let's move up to number six. Number six. All right, number six is a game that I've played tons and tons of hours with here. Uh, Reggie and I have played a lot of this game online together, which is very cool. This was the game that I wanted to feature in this video, uh, specifically from Strictly Limited Games. So they actually sent me this game. They sent me a couple others as well. Um, I did that in a pickup video. I showed all those. But this one, 99 Vitas, it was my favorite. And I have to say, it's just one of the best beat em ups that I've played that are made in the last like few years for sure. They've put a lot of attention to detail. The graphics are really cool. The soundtrack is something that I've actually been playing um, quite a bit. And it's just a great, great game. It's super fun. There's lots of unlockable characters. Um, you know, it's just got this like crazy Japanese style, but it also really emulates Streets of Rage. I would say Streets of Rage is one of the biggest influences in this game. Uh, the only thing that I would say that's maybe a slight turnoff is the graphical style is not quite as gritty as I like uh, beat em ups to be, but with with you know that said, the game itself is very charming, and the the sound effects are good. There's a wide variety of moves. You can power up your your guy. You have all these different power ups you can purchase in the shop. 
Um, so there's shops basically at the end of levels and throughout the game. And you know, you can upgrade your health, you can upgrade all kinds of stuff. And by the time you're done, your guy is like badass. And uh, you know, the bosses are really wacky. I'll, I'll say that the, the bosses in this game are just so bizarre, so wacky, but they have really interesting patterns. And once you figure that out, you know, you'll be rolling through it. It's just a fun game, and like I said, it's fun to play online. So it's a great co-op game. So that's one of the coolest things. And you can play four players online too. So classic fun right here, 99 Vitas. Highly recommend this one. Uh, so before we move on to number five, we have a word from our sponsor. We better listen to that. The Secret of Monkey Island, a game so big only the Sega CD could hold it. You are Guybrush Threepwood, would-be pirate. Something's afoot on these islands and it's up to you to find out what's what. A graphic adventure game has never been so easy. Using the award-winning SCUM system, walking, talking, taking is as simple as pointing the cursor and pressing a button. The Secret of Monkey Island offers adventure gamers a new kind of storytelling experience that includes logic puzzles, complex conversations, and side-splitting humor. Available now from LucasArts Games and JVC, The Secret of Monkey Island sets new standards for Sega Genesis CD games. Number five. Five. Okay, the number five game here is a game that started out very unusual, okay? This one actually was made originally in a game jam format. So that's where the developers come together and I think they have like a weekend to develop a game. And uh, anyway, this one was made in Flash, which is really crazy. And then after a while, they realized it was really pretty good and they, they ended up porting it to various systems, including PC. Uh, and then this is the PS4 version. And here it is, The Binding of Isaac Afterbirth. Now, this is an old school style game. In fact, they originally were trying to make it like a rogue style Zelda dungeon crawler. And it's pretty much that, you know, but there's this really dark artistic side to it, which I love. Basically, you're this, you're this kid, Isaac, and his mom is like basically torturing him. And his tears are the weapon, okay? So when you shoot, uh, it's almost like a twin stick shooter, except it's not quite as fast. You, you know, it's kind of got the slower pace to it, but you do have upgrades all through the levels. And essentially what happens is it's randomly generated. Every game you play is completely random. And that's sort of the charm here. When you first play it, you never know what you're going to get. You might get the most difficult enemies and the worst items and then a really difficult boss. Um, and there's really only like, I think it's like eight levels total, but getting through each dungeon is pretty difficult. It's not easy to do. And for example, as you're exploring, you'll unlock the boss for that, for that level, that dungeon, but sometimes it's not really smart to go there yet. You can explore the rest of the level and find different power-ups, and there's so many different power-ups, like tons of stuff that you can get that help you. So, you know, things that are more uh, powerful, uh, or, you know, it's speed up type of a deal, you know, and then there's bombs. And anyway, I seriously, once I start playing this game, I really have a hard time putting it down. And it's just got that classic old school vibe where you start playing and, and it's tough and you don't want to stop. You just want to keep playing it. Um, and when you die, it's, it's infuriating, especially if you've made it pretty far, but it just starts you over and something about the music is really haunting. And I, I gotta tell you, I love this game. So that's why it's coming in on this list. Let's move up to number four. Okay, so if you're into games like Secret of Monkey Island, uh, I'd say Grim Fandango, Full Throttle, The Dig, and Maniac Mansion, you're gonna love this game. This is actually done by Ron Gilbert and Gary Winnick, and it's Thimbleweed Park. Now, Thimbleweed Park is a very good graphic point-and-click adventure style game. It's very like updated, you know, for new hardware. Uh, the soundtrack is amazing. The ambiance is amazing. I'm not gonna give you guys any spoilers here. I don't wanna ruin anything, but basically uh, the gameplay is so classic, so retro. If you played any of those old school games, you know, where you have to choose pick up and drop and talk to, and then you have choices, 
I mean, it's so cool. It's like, it, you know, I prefer games like this than the ones that are set up like Snatcher and Read Only Memories. I like the ones where the character kind of moves around on the screen and that's what this is. So if you're into games like that and you're into puzzles and adventures, it, you know, if you haven't heard of this, by all means, go check it out. That's why it's so high up on this list is because, you know, it's, it's very, very good. So go check out Thimbleweed Park. I highly recommend it. Let's move up. We've only got three left. What can they be? All right, we got three games left. Coming in at three, this one is a classic RPG. If you like games like Earthbound, the old school Final Fantasy series, I know you guys will like this. It's filled with humor. It's filled with uh, crazy interesting graphics and a very cool combat system. Here it is, Undertale. Now, if you haven't played Undertale, I'm not gonna spoil a lot for you, but I will tell you that it's sort of starts off um, like any other RPG and then flips it all upside down and part of that is because the combat system is so unique and the way that uh, enemies show up and, and how you can deal with them is so different so I highly recommend this just based on you trying something that um, seems like an old-school formula that you like like Earthbound or one of those Final Fantasy games and it's something that you're into and then you play this it's just like it takes one of those games and scrambles it all up and it really is impressive um, the graphics are you know very charming in their own way they're not gonna like blow anyone's socks off that's for sure but they are very well done everything is tasteful this was all done by one guy, Toby Fox, and it took him like two and a half years, but he even did the soundtrack. And the soundtrack is so good. It's like, I'll sometimes just leave my character um, in a certain area and just listen to that song while I like do other stuff because it is such a good soundtrack. So highly recommend this one. That's why it's number three. You gotta check it out. If you haven't seen this game, check it out. Highly recommend it. It's on so many platforms. It's even on Linux. I mean, geez, okay. Anyway, moving on, we have two games left. Let's move up to number two. All right, the number two game on this list is one that I can sink hours into, not only for the awesome soundtrack, but the graphics are so cool. Um, it's a very awesome arcade style top-down game. So it's kind of like Grand Theft Auto, like the original Grand Theft Auto. And here it is, Hotline Miami. Now this is the physical release that includes both Hotline Miami 1 and 2. It's the Japan version, but plays in English. And anyway, the game itself is so good. It's basically like, you know, you wake up, you get this phone call and you're dispatched somewhere. The idea is to just like go through and kill all the bad guys and then you progress. And sometimes you're going upstairs, sometimes you're leaving out the back door. Um, you also unlock different masks and the different masks give you different powers. Like some of them, you know, are better with guns or, you know, melee weapons or whatever. Uh, when you start uh, every level, basically, you have no weapons. And so you have to kind of go through and sometimes be stealthy and grab a bat or you know slowly work your way up to like a shotgun or a machine gun and then you can start taking out people and you can use the doors which is really hilarious you can open doors into people and they fall down you know there's dogs I, this game th is so fun and one thing that's really tough about it is that you'll die over and over and over but what i love about games like this is that they don't go to some loading screen when you die it's instant respawn it starts you right away so you can just go it's like as soon as you're dead boom you're playing again and that sort of like gameplay is essential when you're making something so brutal so it's very gory but very stylized and again the soundtrack so good this this soundtrack is like something that you'll want to turn up and it's a bunch of you know different musicians that came together for this this uh, album basically and anyway it is very cool so that's number two, Hotline Miami. Let's move up, we've only got one more. I know you guys are gonna dig it. Number one. All right, so that was nine very cool games. We've only got one spot remaining. 
And this game is something that totally reminds me of the original Grand Theft Auto. I mean, I know Hotline Miami is similar in that sense, but this is even more so because you can get in cars, you can drive around the city. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna spoil too much for you, but here it is, Retro City Rampage. Now, this one is so cool. I mean, this is like one of those games where you just have so much diverse gameplay going on um, and so many cool cameos. Like, like I mean, I'm not gonna ruin everybody, but I will tell you, like, the Ninja Turtles are in this, uh, Batman, you know, just so many cool, like, pop culture icons, and it's so well done. It's, like, just great writing, very cool graphics. It's fun. I mean, it's, like, not only has it got an action element, but it's got sort of an adventure game element where you're, you know, going around exploring things, and I love this game. The soundtrack is so authentically retro as well. So, highly recommend Retro City Rampage. This is available on tons of systems, so I highly recommend you guys check this one out. So that concludes these top 10 retro style games on PS4 that have a physical release. I already have two more lists made, okay? I've got shmups coming out, the shoot 'em ups and I've also got platformers. So if you didn't see your game in this list, uh, know that I have two more lists already done. I've already got the game selected and I can't wait to show you guys those. But of course, you know, let me know some in the comments here uh, that you like, you know, and other ones that you think are really cool retro style PS4 games because this was hard for me to narrow down to 10. And, you know, the shmups and the platformers that are coming up, some of those are going to blow your guys' mind. So, anyway, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And until next time, you know what to do. You keep that shit retro by playing Retro City Rampage on the PS4 later on.